Since 1998, Pokemon has been a worldwide phenomenon, spawning cartoons, merchandise, card games, comics, and most important of all, video games. Hey Shackers, Greg here, and today I'll be counting down the top 10 best Pokemon games to ever hit our consoles. Now I'm basing this list on a few key factors, impact on the franchise of Pokemon itself, gameplay, and overall innovation. A lot of these Pokemon games were released in sets of three, but since the third in the franchise was usually a director's cut of the last two, I'm just going to name off the first two in the set. For example, Emerald is just a combination of Ruby and Sapphire, so by extension, if Ruby and Sapphire make the list, Emerald will be included with them even if I don't mention it. Well, let's pack our Pokeballs and be prepared to dispute the multiple Nintendo claims even though this video is fair use. These are the top 10 best Pokemon games. What do you like to play? Pokemon! Pokemon? Pokemon with the pokey and the man and the thing where the guy comes out of the thing and he likes to fall out of that! <laughs> One of the handful of Pokemon games that focused heavily on the story, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time and Darkness was a slight improvement over its predecessor. With a heavy emphasis on exploration rather than rescuing, it was one of the best-selling Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games to date. It was a fun and different Pokemon game to play on the Nintendo DS. The game introduced a second gen of Pokemon to trainers everywhere. You were able to select from a male or female trainer at the start of your adventure for the first time, not to mention the game had a true day night cycle that followed with the Nintendo DS clock. Even though Heart Gold and Soul Silver were just visually updated from Gold and Silver on the Game Boy Color, it added a few new features that the original didn't have, like wireless trading and battling. Heart and Silver was also one of the first games to introduce two new regions, which practically doubled the length of the game and gave you a bunch more Pokemon to catch and train. Even though these games were just graphically updated versions of Gold and Silver from their Game Boy predecessor, it was great seeing some of our favorite Pokemon brought to life on the Nintendo DS. With huge success of X and Y on the 3DS, Nintendo re-released Ruby and Sapphire with a full graphic makeover on the 3DS. Ruby and Sapphire were the first games in the series to introduce double Pokemon battles, new Pokemon abilities, and the new villainous faction Team Aqua and Team Magma. The story took leaps and bounds, tasking you to not only become a Pokemon master, but to save the world from utter destruction. title led people to believe that this was just a sequel to the Pokemon Stadium series, and even though there was a battle mode where you could see your third generation Pokemon fight it out in 3D for the first time, the game was actually the first fledged Pokemon RPG adventure on the console, the GameCube to be exact, and the game relied heavily on its story. A full 3D world was explorable, and for the first time we got the console true form Pokemon game in a way. Sure some things were different from the classic Game Boy versions, but the colorful characters, awesome music, and like I mentioned before, heavy emphasis on story made it a Pokemon RPG that's worth playing, even though most people, including some Pokemon fans, have never played it. Gen 1, clearly the best generation of Pokemon. Fire Red and Leaf Green were remakes of the classic Red and Blue games on the Game Boy, with of course updated graphics and music. It was great to see literally the same game with major upgrades done to its engine, including better sprites. It's one of my personal favorite Pokemon titles. What 
which started out with a terrible interface and buggy gameplay, quickly evolved into one of the better online card games out there. Trading, casual play, tournaments, the only thing the game is missing is a ranked mode. However, it still offers loads of ways to play, with an outstanding number of digital cards that are still expanding today. Light years ahead of the Pokemon trading card game that first appeared digitally on the Game Boy, the game is a lot of fun and still offers the depth and strategy on par with other competitive card games like Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering. It's available on PC, iOS, and Android, so you can play anywhere, and the game's very gracious on giving out digital packs and rewards for climbing the ladder. If you liked card games but have never tried this, check it out. It's well worth your time. Our first entry to a true form Pokemon RPG on the Nintendo 3DS. The visuals were fantastic, bringing all your favorite Pokemon to life like never before. It was also the first franchise to introduce Mega Evolutions, allowed you to interact with your Pokemon by petting, training, and feeding them in minigames, and of course, it introduced the all-new fairy type to the Pokemon universe. It became the fastest and best-selling 3DS Pokemon game to date, and received stellar reviews from players and critics alike, and has sold over 14.98 million copies. X and Y offer over 450 different types of Pokemon to capture and train, as well as multiple regions to explore to catch them all. X and Y are the pinnacle of the Nintendo handheld, and let's hope Game Freak and Nintendo can keep the trend going with Pokemon Sun and Moon. From the Game Boy to the Nintendo 64, bringing Pokemon battles to life was every kid's dream back in 1998. However, we'd have to wait two years to fight our Pokemon battles out on the Nintendo 64. In March 2000, Pokemon Stadium finally hit North America. Not only did we see our beloved Pokemon retrained in Red and Blue battle on our televisions, but we also got live announcer commentary as well as the famous transfer pack that allowed us to use our own Pokemon we had worked so hard to train and obtain in Red and Blue on the Nintendo 64. The game also featured a few fun mini-games that up to four people could play, which was a nice little distraction from the constant battling you were doing. Not to mention you could even play your Game Boy Pokemon games using the transfer pack on the Nintendo 64. It was innovative and awesome for any fan of the Pokemon series. started it all. I remember going to KB Toys and looking for a game my brother and I could play together. The salesman then mentioned Pokemon. I got red and my brother got blue and the rest is history. We got sucked into the game immediately. Battling, training, and collecting these digital monsters was a blast. Not finding out till months later that there was a TV show that featured the famous creatures as well. We quickly became Pokemon freaks and have been playing the games ever since. It's red and blue that I have to thank for it. So a little fun fact before we get to number one, here is actually a mini Pokemon display I have in my office, and these two games are the same ones I bought in 1998 for my brother and me. This is my red version, his blue version, and both of them actually still work and still have all the same Pokemon that I ca captured, you know, between 1998 and 2000. So I just thought it was a really cool thing I wanted to show you guys. It's the same game. I wish it told you the date, but it doesn't, but it still works. I saw some of my favorite Pokemon that I was using, which was uh, Charmander, Squirtle, a Bulbasaur, Jolteon, Flareon. See the 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 volume just died, but this is the original Game Boy that I had for years. So anyway, fun fact. To be honest, Pokemon has always been popular among kids and gamers like myself, but the new Nintendo mobile game has swept the nation off its feet. 
beating out active users on both Tinder and Twitter in its first week of release. Most of the core things that make the Pokemon series great are featured in the mobile game as well. With trading and one-on-one -on -one trainer battles on the way, it's really one of the most innovative and enjoyable Pokemon games to play. Yes, it may be casual, but the game itself holds hundreds of hours of gameplay, gets you outside and meeting people, and gets you exercise. I mean, when's the last time you saw a group of people playing a Pokemon game in a single area? Maybe a Pokemon Championship or my junior high school, but that was really it. It brings people together and outside, and when a game does that, it's a major success. What Pokemon games did you guys love? Which ones did I miss? Let me know in the comments below. For more videos like this and everything else gaming related, you're already in the right place. You're on checknews.com.